You know what you came here for. Sit back and tune in for Isha Talor. Yeah, yeah. What's up, y'all? Welcome, welcome back to my channel. I'm your girl, Isha Talor. So today's video is going to be tips if you're interested in getting into Korean skincare. I feel like everyone and their mama is getting into Korean skincare, and it's for a good reason. I'm not gonna get into the science and the backstory and, and all that, but Korean skincare is a lot more advanced than American skincare, and so. Let's be honest, their skin is amazing. They have the term glass skin and it's giving very much that. So I wanted to give some tips from my point of view, also someone of color, because I feel like not enough people are talking about Korean skincare from a darker complexion. So I wanted to just give that for us. These tips still work for anyone, any skin tone, but I still wanted to represent. So, so the first thing before getting into Korean skincare, also known as K-beauty, you need to know your skin type. Not all of these products are for all skin, and I've learned that very early on. I'm in a couple K-beauty groups on Facebook, and everyone will be like, oh, give me product recommendations. And it's like, what skin type do you have, right? That's really important when you're getting into any type of skincare, but specifically K-beauty because it's a whole different realm. For reference, I have dry, sensitive, and eczema prone skin. So those are also things to keep in mind. You're not always just gonna be one simple thing. And I also get hormonal acne as well. So along with knowing what type of skin you have, also knowing what allergies you have is gonna be so important. I tried the viral snail mucin essence. And if I had did more research, which I'm gonna get to in a second, I would have realized that if you're allergic to dust, dust mites, shellfish, you cannot use the snail mucin. And I'm allergic to dust. So the fact that I broke out so bad when I used the snail mucin, I was low-key pissed at the community because I'm like, it's working for y'all, but it's not working for me. Girl, you could have just did your research. Like, if you're allergic to dust, you can't use snow mucin. Okay, so now that I know that, I don't use anything with snow mucin. So that goes, again, to my first tip of just knowing your skin type and your allergies before even listening to anyone's recommendation. Secondly, I kind of teased this in the beginning. Figure out what your skin concerns are as well. Not everyone has the same skin concerns. For me, example, mine are hyperpigmentation, and fine lines. I have like wrinkles and fine lines under my eyes due to allergies. I've had it forever. It's nothing that's gonna really gonna go away. I also have hereditary dark circles. It's not gonna go away, but I do have like dark marks from eczema scarring and things of that nature on my skin. So that is something that I am personally targeting. Again, I also have acne occasionally. So when that does happen, that becomes my skin concern at that moment. Typically, people's skin concern is hyperpigmentation, acne, dull skin, big pores, things of that nature. So again, knowing what your skin concern will also help you figure out what skincare products to get. This next one is super important as well. I have a skincare video here on my channel about the importance of reading ingredients. I'm not gonna stress this enough, <laughs> but researching ingredients in your products it is important to know what is actually going on your skin, what is going into your bloodstream. Also, researching ingredients is gonna be helpful to know if the ingredients is actually addressing your skin concern. Things like salicylic acid helps with acne scarring. So knowing the ingredient, does it help with my actual problem, which is acne, like et cetera, et cetera. Now leave the apps and the websites that I use to research ingredients. I use Yuka. I've mentioned this so many times on my channel. I'm now using Clara or something like that. Cezia is becoming a really good one um, to see if ingredients cause any fungal acne. It's something that I learned on TikTok. I was like, oh, this is a cool website. So I've been using that. I've been using Think Dirty as well. So I actually use all of them when I'm looking into a skincare product because I'm like, girl, this website may say this, but is this one going to say the same thing? Like I cross reference to make sure my ingredients is top tier. Right. So getting into the actual nitty gritty of Korean skincare, we know they do like a 10 step routine. They do a seven layer toner routine. They do a lot of different things. But when you're starting out in Korean beauty, you do not need to do all of that. As tempting as it is to wanna do all of that, you really don't have to. So 
the essential things that you can do to start off Korean skincare, right, that I think is important, is cleansing. Cleansing is probably the most important step in your skin routine other than sunscreen. But cleansing, double cleansing only at night. Again, I'll get into the specifics of this when I do a skincare uh, routine video, but using a cleansing oil, a balm, or a micellar water to remove all the dirt, sunscreen, debris, environmental things, pollen, all that off of your skin throughout the day. I know sometimes you'll be like, oh, I've been in the house all day. My face is not dirty. Yes, it is. Wash your face, double cleanse your face at night, even if you wear sunscreen, even if you're tired, I do not care. Since I've been double cleansing and double cleansing correctly, my skin has been different. Then also using a water-based cleanser, that's part of double cleansing, is you're using an oil-based or micellar water as your first step, and then using a water-based cleanser. It could be a foam cleanser, gel cleanser, it doesn't really matter, as long as it's water-based, to then remove that dirt oil and debris is important. You have to make sure you're removing all of it or you will just clog your pores and you will break out and it would be completely pointless. I also recommend you incorporating at least one toner. Again, Koreans have like a seven layer toner. It's not necessary. I, I do have a three, I think I'm up to three to four toners, but that's just me because I'm like, okay. <laughs> but incorporate at least one toner to help balance your pH and balance your skin after cleansing. Again, the toner that you get is going to be based off of your skin concern and your skin type. If your skin type is dry, opt for a hydrating toner. But if your skin is dry and then you're dealing with hyperpigmentation, maybe get something that's hydrating but then also has something that targets, it doesn't have to, um, but it can target your hyperpigmentation. I'm going to tell you a trick as to what you can really do to battle those two, but I give, give me a second. I also recommend one serum or ampule. Ampule, I've learned lately, is just a serum on steroids. It's just like it has the most ingredients in it known to man, and it's very potent and it's really good. So I recommend incorporating at least a serum or an ampule after your toner. Serum and or ampule is the one that targets your skin concerns. So the hyperpigmentation, the dark spots. So for me, I use my toner for hydration and then my serum for my hyperpigmentation. And then moisturizer, again, we're keeping it simple. So, so far cleansing, toner, serum, moisturizer. So again, something that is hydrating if you need hydration, something that controls your oils or um, combats acne, things like that is a moisturizer. And then sunscreen is probably the most important step that I didn't know I needed until now. Child, Koreans should love their sunscreen. And I don't know why we don't focus on it a lot more. I'm going to have a short here all about the sunscreens that I'm trying. There's chemical sunscreens and there's mineral slash physical sunscreens. And they're different. So making sure that you're implementing that every morning, even if it's not sunny, you will see a difference in your skin. Okay, so those are the, the things that I recommend that you just start off with. Ignore the toner pads the essence. Another tip that I recommend is looking up dermatologists or other reviewers that is of the same skin tone, skin concern, skin type, because that will help you narrow down the recommendations of products. No offense, but I was not looking at my lighter skin counterparts when it came to Korean suggestions because I'm like, you looking for something for redness is not what I need for dark spots. You know what I mean? I have a little bit more melanin and I'm trying to calm that down. So I didn't look to their recommendations so much because we're just different. If they had dry skin, okay, yeah, maybe, okay. It works for you dry skin wise, fine. But if you're saying it works for your redness and hyperpigmentation, would not on the same lane. So just look at different people respectfully. Just look at different people on the internet that is similar in nature and then that helps you narrow it down. Look, all of these are valuable tips, but as I like read them, I'm like, yes, buy from credible websites and vendors. TikTok, as tempting as it is to shop these Korean skincares from TikTok, do not. Unless it's literally from the brand itself. But from just a regular person that is looking for a commission, they're probably not tagging the correct product and there's too many fakes out here. To the point where these brands on TikTok are, are making videos like, this is how to tell if this is the real vitamin C. I'm gonna leave the credible websites that you can get Korean skincare from down below. I honestly get a lot of mine from Amazon, but again, you have to make sure it's from the actual um, brand of their 
Amazon because that's the only way that it would make sense. All right, so now that you finally got maybe all of your skincare products that you want to try or whatever, whatever, make sure you take photos before you start, during the process, document the process, um, and kind of see like how your skin is transforming. Does your skin like it? Did it change yesterday? That's what I did. I, I mean, I did that for you guys for one, but for my own self, I was like, oh wait, yesterday I didn't, I didn't break out on this side. What did I use yesterday? And also in my notes app on my phone, I would write down like, okay, I used this toner today. I used this serum, just so then I could go back and be like, oh, my skin didn't like that one. Like, you know what I mean? So, and then that being said. <laughs> don't do what i did okay i spent like over like 200 or something dollars i spent a, hundred, a couple hundred dollars just buying everything and i wanted to try some try everything so bad and i i did do patch tests because i have really sensitive skin like i said i did patch tests back here and on my on my wrist as well but don't use everything at the same time. I spent so much time trying to figure out which one broke me out that it was unnecessary. So implement a new product once every two to three weeks. I know you're like, girl, I wanna just start everything. Hey, be my guest, you can do that. But you don't wanna ruin your skin barrier like I almost did. And lastly, the tip that I wanna give you guys is that you do not have to have your whole skincare routine be Korean products. I felt like I had to for absolutely no reason, but no. Because after I realized, after trying a couple cleansing oils that were Korean, they weren't working for me. But I ended up just using my old preference of a cleansing oil and my skin was fine. So don't feel like you have to change every single step in your routine to be Korean skincare because it doesn't have to be. Um, I will say that 99.9% .9 of my skin routine right now is Korean based, but that's only because of their technology is just so amazing and the ingredients are a lot better for my skin, but don't feel like you have to as well. If you find that something's working for you that's American based or whatever, stick to it. It's not that yes. serious. I hope you found this helpful. Let me know if you have any questions below. Are you into Korean skincare now? Do you feel like you want to get into it? Is there anything that you have any questions about? Let me know in the comments below. Again, stay tuned. Subscribe to your girl for my Korean skincare routine. I kind of had one a couple months back because Good Molecules is Korean as well. But I stepped it up a bit, just, just a smidge. So, <laughs> and I've seen amazing results. So stay tuned for that. And also, I'm going to have a lot of shorts here. It's just easier to have digestible content about cleansing oils and different things like that. So stay tuned. Again, don't forget to hit that like button. It goes a long way on my channel. Subscribe if you're liking this type of content. I also have other content, hair content, dog content. It's not, not just skincare. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you.